Hey guys, happy Monday. Welcome back to Ask Amy. I have a question um, today from Kristen, and it's a question about um, a habit that she's wondering if it's, if it's different from other habits. So let me just go ahead and read her question and we'll get right to it. So Kristen says, um, hi Amy, first of all, your work is amazing. I've read your book um, along with other Three Principles authors. I have a pretty good understanding of mind, thought, and consciousness. However, I've struggled with night eating, waking up out of a dead sleep numerous times a night with an uncontrollable urge to eat, feeling that if I don't eat, I'll never get back to sleep. And she's had this for 16 years, over 16 years, she says. So my question is, do you think that this is any different from any other habit or addiction since it happens as I'm sleeping? I'm sure it's not, but it just feels like it fools me because I'm awake or become, I'm sorry, because I'm asleep and I'm not even aware the urges have happened until I've already gotten out of bed and eaten. This happens anywhere from three to six times a night. I would be most grateful for any advice or help you might have. And I just want to read, I want to get to the question, but I want to read this little post postscript that she kind of put on here. On a side note, she says, about six months ago, I had an epiphany or insight that I didn't have to give in and wake up and eat at night. And I was free for three weeks, um, but somehow it came back and I don't know why. It was a miracle as I've done this night eating every night for over 16 years. So Kristen, as you say, um, first of all, let's just kind of reiterate this because I have, um, I've worked with people with this exact habit and um, it's, a, it's an interesting one. So, so Kristen's waking up for everyone listening. She's waking up in the middle of the night um, three to six times, it sounds like, every night with this uncontrollable urge to go eat, kind of, kind of with the belief or understanding or thought, I guess, uh, whether it's there in, in each and every moment or not. But somewhere in there is this thinking that she has to follow through on this urge or eat in order to fall back asleep or else she won't fall back asleep. So it's a long time, Kristen, as you know, 16 years and three to six times a night. And you ask, um, you know, is this, ha is this any different than any other habit or addiction since it happens while you're sleeping? And it isn't. And I think it's super, super important to see that. Like really, really potentially incredibly helpful to see that because what's happening is something's coming up within you, this thought, feeling, urge, all the same thing, right? All just different words for the same thing. This feeling's coming up within you, and then as you describe it, in some way, even when you're asleep, even when you're half asleep, even when you're really feeling kind of out of it, in some way you know, because you, you wrote it in your question here, that there's something in there that says, I have to follow through on this in order to fall back asleep. So if we were to kind of pick this apart, we could kind of put it into two, two chunks like that. There's this habitual thought, feeling, urge, whatever it is that wakes you up. We know what that is, right? It's just experience. It's a thought, feeling, and urge. It's this, this stuff moves through you and wakes you up. And it feels like I have to go eat. And there's some thinking somewhere in there. Again, not you're not necessarily consciously aware of it or thinking it or reasoning it out in the middle of the night. I know that. But there's something in there that says, I better follow through on this because if I don't, I'm not going to fall back asleep. And that, just that right there, is exactly like every other habit addiction I've ever seen. They, they're made of the same thing. So we have this experience, comes to life, and then there's a part of us that that takes it seriously, that gets caught up in it, that, that is duped by it, even as you say, it fools you, you know? It fools us when we're wide awake also, it really does. There's that part of us that gets fooled by it and then follows through and acts on it, that part of us that doesn't see it as thought arising in the moment. So for anyone, and same for you, Kristen, like to be able to see, okay, that's all that's happening. I'm having a totally natural, normal human experience. This experience wakes me, you know, comes through me, shows up. And in some way, I react to that. I take it seriously. I do what it says. I think I have to do what it says. I get caught up in it, whatever that whole thing looks like. There's just life. And then there's 
us in some way kind of innocently, innocently misunderstanding life or misinterpreting that life and, and acting on it and doing these things we don't want to do. And seeing it like that for any habit, asleep, awake, food related, drug related, behavior related, whatever it is, is super helpful. So that's the first thing. I really want you to kind of keep it there and, and you suspect it in the way that you ask the question. It's not any different than anything else because that's where I see people get so caught up and, and feeling kind of stuck in things is we tell ourselves we're different. This is different. You know, these things don't apply or we're so caught up in the specifics of our habit, especially the specifics of our habit, thinking they're an exception to the rule or they're different than everyone else. And that just has this way of, of kind of keeping us feeling sort of stuck in it and not really able to, not open enough to see new things because we already think we know. So if you can just know, no, nope, all this is is this thing that wakes me up or doesn't wake you up maybe in your case, but this thing that happens in the middle of the night and then there's a way that you get caught up in that and take it seriously and act on it, that's it. And keep it really simple like that for yourself. Um, and two things that kind of caught my attention here. So one, you say, I'm asleep and not even aware the urges have happened until I've already gotten out of bed and eaten. And then this happens three to six times a night for over 16 years. I really want you to look at that for yourself. So sometimes we can kind of, our mind will want to sort of stereotype or generalize or, or put, you know, labels on, on experiences like that to where it might say, well, I just, I'm just up doing it. And then I come to when I'm finished eating three to six times a night for 16 years. But I want you to get curious about this and be in the moment with it. So if we were to step back and look at this on a big 16 year timeline and say, here's what happens. Sure. We're going to have to generalize anytime we're stepping back and looking at something on a big timeline, you're, you're by definition, you're bucketing it all together, but let's not bucket. Let's be in the moment, moment to moment to moment. Now, I'm sure if you say this is your experience, I'm sure it is and has been many times where you, you're not even awake enough to know what's going on and then you kind of wake up at some point in all the senses of the word, <laughs> wake up at some point and see, oh, I did it again. I get that. I mean, I did that awake. People do that when they're awake even, but I totally get that in the middle of the night, right? So that's happening sometimes. But, but if you can just be moment to moment to moment, I bet you start to notice that there's a bit of an awakeness or an awareness or a consciousness of what's going on if we really kind of break it down and look at it in a little bit of a smaller way. And the thing with any habit, so again, people asleep or awake all the time will say this, well, I just, I kind of blacked out or I didn't know what I was doing or I was so in a fog, I just did my thing and then I, re and then I realized what I had done when I got to the end of it. Well. All we can do is make a different choice when we wake up and see it. So if that's the case, okay. As soon as you, as soon as you kind of come to in whatever way that is, wherever you are in that process, and you can see, oh, I don't have to do this. I'm doing this and I'm caught up in this experience again, pretending like it's real, pretending like I have to do it. That's right, I don't have to do this. You have that ability to make a different choice at any point. Again, it's just gonna be whenever you wake up to it. But I know if you if you're more in in the moments with it, which again I get it. You're asleep, you're in a fog, but this is happening so consistently. If 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 something wakes you up a little bit earlier, a little bit sooner, and you can stop a little bit earlier, a little bit sooner, that's how this stuff starts to change. So we just wake up from it when we see to wake up from it. That's it. Like and again, this is in the middle of the daytime when people fall into their habits and they're caught up in these these habitual cycles, we, we see what we see when we see it. That's it. But if you have this kind of bigger eye on that, in a sense, like, okay, maybe, maybe I can, you know, maybe I'll wake up more the first time it happens in the middle of the night and I can, I can let this feeling move through me and make another choice. That's, that's huge. And it might not sound like enough because again, in your mind, you're saying 16 years, three to six times a night, I sleep through the whole thing. Look at that. Look at that and just see how, how literally accurate it is and look for little moments where you can wake up sooner and sooner. And the biggie in this for you, Kristen, is this thought that 
you're not going to fall back asleep unless you follow through. Now, just that alone kind of tells us, yeah, there's something in here. There's some awareness. Now, I'm not at all saying, again, you're making a conscious choice and you're doing, you know, but there's something in there that's like you see that. That's a little sticky point where it looks like this is necessary. Following through on, on this night eating is necessary to fall back asleep. One, is it? I mean, just really get curious about that for yourself. Is it? What if it isn't? What if that can be there and that can then, that feeling, I mean, and then that feeling can then fade away and you can fall back asleep. Like, what if you're wrong about this? Because believing that and seeing, oh, this is just the way it is, it just keeps us there. Any thought we think is absolute truth, I mean, we're there. So it's really to your benefit to really get curious about that one and say, what if I'm wrong? Or what if I'm wrong some of the time? And then come Okay, even if you're right, even if you don't fall back asleep, so what? The alternative is this cycle keeps going, going and going. 16 years, three to six times a night, that's a lot. So what if you don't give in, but you lay there and you don't fall back asleep? Then what? And I don't, I don't actually, I'm not really asking you this, but I want you to just notice all the thinking your mind has about it. Oh, that would be awful for this reason and that reason and that it's too uncomfortable or I can't do that or I'd be too tired. Just, just notice how much stuff is generated around that and look at that the same way. Huh, what if, what if this isn't true either? What if all that stuff your mind generates around it isn't true? Because this insight that you shared is huge. So six months ago, you had an insight that you didn't have to give in and wake up and eat. That's it. That's what, I mean, that's how you phrased it, you know, I know in a short email, but you had an insight that you didn't have to do this. You saw that in a deep way. And for three weeks, you didn't do it. That's, that's a lot. For three solid weeks, it didn't happen. So that right there is huge for you. I mean, that shows you, okay, you don't have to do this. How, how could we say you have to do this? For three weeks, you didn't. It didn't even come up. So clearly, you don't have to. But our minds get so habituated and caught up in our thinking and believe it, take it as truth, that we just keep replaying those same patterns. So you saw the truth there for three weeks, and it was not, this was not part of your experience. That can be the case again, and it doesn't have to feel or look exactly like those three weeks, so I don't want you to try to recreate that. But to just get curious, like, wow, apparently I can. <laughs> apparently I can be without this habit. All that happened, as far as you know, is right beforehand you saw that you didn't have to do it. So again, it's kind of showing us there's this little superstition in there, this little false belief that says, I've got to do this or I'm not going to fall back asleep. And what if that's just a thought? It's not true at all. What if? So you just kind of, with these big what if thoughts, you just kind of let them sit there. This, I know it sounds crazy and it sounds like it's not enough, but this does a ton to just kind of put a what if thought out there and just let it kind of marinate. Like it'll do what it needs to do. We don't have to beat it to death or prove it or inquire into it or work it, you know, like just let it kind of be there and do its thing. But if you ask those like, hmm, what if I am awake? What if I do have an opportunity to stop a little sooner in the middle of the night? And what if I don't have to follow through on this to fall back asleep? And you just kind of keep those there. They will work for you just like they have, just like they have before. So thank you so much, Kristen, for sending this question. I hope it's helpful to others. Um, again, the theme in this is like, everything's the same. All these habits are the same. And whenever our, our mind is really good at separating and, and labeling and finding exceptions and wanting to make everything complicated and different, the more we can see it's so simple. What's happening for Kristen is the same thing that's happening for people in the middle of the night, the middle of the day, whenever it is, around anything, all over the place. It's super simple. Keeping it there, it just frees us up and there's a lot of space to see more around it. So thanks again, Kristen, for sending your question. Um, Great to talk with all you guys, and I'll see you back next Monday.